Hello everyone, this is Randy here. And today we have the start of a multi-part series on the analysis of Sun Tzu's Art of War. In Mandarin, it would be called Sun Tzu Ding Fa. You don't have to remember that, but I, I figured I would pronounce it in its native language. So Sun Tzu's Art of War is a, a very famous treatise written by, of course, Sun Tzu, um, who was um, an ancient Chinese military philosopher, and he, he wrote this book on military strategy. I, I'm going to explain certain principles from the book and apply it to my profession, which is litigation. So for those of you who don't know me, I am a litigation lawyer. I specialize in employment law, which is assisting both employees and employers in legal disputes. And I'm often in a court, I'm often uh, assisting my clients with, with advocacy and, and with disputes. And there are many principles in Sun Tzu's Art of War that apply to many aspects of life. Uh, and one of which is litigation, because litigation is an adversarial process. There's a winner, there's a loser, there's uh, competition between parties. And so in, in many ways, litigation is, is similar to war. Uh, of course, the stakes may be a little bit lower uh, in that uh, usually <laughs> nobody dies in, in, in litigation, although <laughs> there are some some extreme cases where uh, you know lawsuits may have caused uh, suicides or or or, or uh, murder or terrorist activities. Uh, very very rare cases, but m most of the times uh, litigation does not lead to death. So so the stakes are a little bit lower in litigation, but many of the principles remain the same, that you have two parties who are in opposition uh, and they are fighting each other. So, so litigation is probably the closest thing we have in civilized society uh, of fighting, where, where the rules are more or less uniform in that we have courts and, and the justice system that spells out the rules, but it's still a fight, right? In modern society, instead of using guns and knives, um, at least within the society. Between societies, obviously, we still have war, but within the society, without using guns and knives and violence, we, we have other ways to fight, uh, ways that are sanctioned by society. Uh, one of which, and the primary way that people fight, um, is through the court system. So that's why there, there's a big parallel between what happens in court and litigation um, and the principles of war. Uh, so using the principles of Sun Tzu, in this first episode, um, I will talk about the hierarchy of victory. So Sun Tzu says that victory has, has, has a hierarchy. There's different levels of victory and that they're not all the same. Um, so, so if you were to imagine this hierarchy, at, at the very top of this hierarchy, the, the type of victory that you want to achieve is, is a decisive victory where you use the fewest amount of resources, right? So where you, for example, have the enemy surrender without firing a single shot, where the enemy capitulates without offering resistance, where you capture a city, for example, without having its inhabitants defend the city. So, so using a strategy, coercion, duress, uh, intimidation, using political means to actually win without having to fight. So victory without the need to fight is the highest level of victory, according to Sun Tzu. And the next in the hierarchy, a little bit lower than victory without the need to fight, is stopping the enemy from mobilizing and joining their forces. Then slightly lower than that is meeting the enemy in the field, right? A head-to-head -head combat in the field with the enemy. That, that is a lower form of victory. Victory can still be achieved, but that's not as good as the higher forms of victory. And the worst form of victory is achieved after besieging a walled city. 
that is to say, spending many, many months besieging a city uh, that's well defended, uh, where there is just mass amounts of resources, uh, both in blood and treasure, spent uh, on the capture of a particular city. So that's the worst type of victory. So if we were to draw some parallels to, to the legal profession and, and what I do as a litigator, a decisive victory is when where you can convince somehow the, the other side, where you can convince the other party in, in, in this adversarial process to either give up or to give you everything that you asked for. So that, that, that would be a decisive victory without spending too much time and resources in doing so. And I'll explain an example of that later on in this video. The next best is, is having you know, a, a fight with the enemy, perhaps going to court, uh, perhaps having to, to go, through, go through litigation to somehow resolve a case, but, but there's obviously resources spent uh, and legal costs spent in the litigation process. Uh, and then probably the worst type of victory is protracted litigation, right? Going through um, a full trial where, where many, many hours and legal fees and resources and energy is spent on a full trial and perhaps in an appeal after that where, where it's this protracted litigation where, where it just never ends. You know, some cases, for example, they, they, they move through the court system or the justice system over many years through, through different forums. And at the end, there is some a pirate victory where one party wins, you know, wins, but, but they end up spending thousands of dollars in legal fees. They spent 10 years of their life pursuing this particular matter. So is that really a victory? At the end, sure, some judge somewhere said that you were right. Um, and you got some amount of money or some judgment in your favor, but but in essence you've also you've also lost because so much time and energy was spent on that victory. Um, so the the best type of a victory, as I said, is one where you manage to convince your opponent to give up, or conversely to give you everything that you want, without having to go through a significant fight. I'll give you an example of that through through my own practice. Um, as you know, I mainly represent uh, clients in the workplace setting. So I had once written a demand letter. So a demand letter is a legal letter uh, that you write prior to litigation. So prior to going, court, going to court, you, you write this letter as a lawyer and you send it to the other side and in this case, it was it was the employer of my client. So my client was an employee, and the defendant in this case, or the respondent, or or the the other party, was was an employer. So I had sent this legal letter to the other side, and it was a very well written legal letter with with the full arguments and and what my client demanded, and we had a full list of demands, financial demands in terms of my client's severance package, their benefits, exactly what I wanted. And this letter, it turned out, was so well written that the other side actually just said yes to everything. They said, we're not even going to fight you. <laughs> we got your letter. Um, we acquiesce to your demand in this letter. So that's probably the best case scenario. This doesn't happen to me that often. Maybe it happens uh, <laughs> uh, once a year, if I'm lucky, where, where I write a single letter um, and, and my client gets everything, the entire wish list. And in, in, in this case, it was everything. And we, we had made some fairly extravagant demands as well. And we got those extravagant demands met by way of one correspondence. So that, that's a golden letter where, where there is no fight, there's no litigation. The other side just says, yes, uh, you sign minutes of settlement um, and the checks come rolling in. So that's an example of, of a decisive victory uh, early on uh, in the game. Uh, for for a plaintiff or for someone who who's trying to receive compensation from another party. Now, conversely, I've also represented employers, so I've also represented defendants from companies from the other side, who who are now receiving legal letters from other lawyers and other law firms asking for money. So, what what is the opposite of this? Well, the opposite is convincing the other side not to sue, to just give up. So. Again, an example from my, my professional life is I received a legal letter from 
uh, so acting as, as the defendant and the representative of the company in this case, I received a legal letter from another lawyer saying that your client's ex-employee uh, was terminated without cause and, and they want to sue you and, and here's how much we demand and, and if you don't give this to us, we're going to go to court, we're going to sue your pants off um, and we're going to drag you through this long process. So, so I investigated this matter and I found that uh, my client had a very strong grounds, has a very strong grounds for a counterclaim against this particular employee. This employee certainly was not the best performer and had some things that were, uh, you know, questionable while they were an employee. So, so we did the full investigation internally and we, we gathered all of this evidence. So I called up the other lawyer and I presented the evidence to the other lawyer and I said, if you're going to sue us, we're going to counter sue you. We're going to throw all of this at you. We've done our due diligence internally. And, and we're going to make your life really miserable. Um, so if you, you're going to drag us through the court system, we're going to drag you through the court system. And we happen to have more resources. So come at me, bro. I didn't say come at me, bro, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, and as a result, they went away. So, so they, my client, the employer, was never sued. That phone call was highly effective. The lawyer took the evidence back to the client. The client was intimidated. Uh, their client was intimidated. And, and this particular plaintiff never became a plaintiff. They, they, they saw the evidence, they disappeared, and they just walked off. So a lawsuit never happened. So that's a decisive victory, a victory without having to fight, a victory at, at the nascent stages of a conflict where you end up avoiding the conflict altogether and securing a victory. Uh, there are other examples in, in, in my professional career where, where that unfortunately did not happen, right? So Sung Su says the next best victory is meeting in the battlefield where, where you, you actually have to fight it out. And, and that's what has happened in some cases where it takes two years, three years, sometimes four years in, in Superior Court or the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. I, I practice mainly in the province of Ontario, uh, Canada, so that's where, where I do my work. And sometimes it takes years. I recently, uh, or not me, but my firm recently resolved a, a case that took four years at the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. We, we, we won. We won the case and the client got the money, but four years of that person's life and receiving very little income over the four year period. You know, we got them a big, big award, um, but, but that's less ideal than getting that amount of money four years earlier, right? Imagine receiving that money four years earlier, you can invest that money, you can put that as down payment towards, towards a, a, a real estate property. You can do things with that money now, rather than have to wait four years later for, for that money, right? There's always, uh, greater value in receiving money up front than having to wait for it. So that, that's a case where, although we won, ultimately there, there was a high sacrifice uh, paid by the client. And, and I'll give you one last example, the worst type of victory, where, where is, is you secure the victory, but, but over such a long period of time that the, the victory becomes a, a, a pyrrhic victory in that it's, it's symbolic only. And this is not from, from my life or, or an example from my firm, uh, but, but an ex-girlfriend uh, of mine, um, she, uh, her father uh, got involved in a car accident and, and he, he became just uh, obsessed with, uh, with receiving compensation uh, from, from this car accident. And in this case took over his life really really just like completely took over his life every day he would just obsess with with receiving compensation and he he, he would claim that this car accident made him disabled and made him unable to work this ruined his entire life and i think part of it was was malingering and part of it was just psychological there's this phenomenon known as uh, learned helplessness where where you just psychologically uh, self-identify as someone who who is now helpless even though you're not actually completely helpless, you're able to get back on your feet, but you, you just become so discouraged that you identify as, as, as just completely helpless. And I, I think, unfortunately, this happened to my ex-girlfriend's uh, father. Uh, he was a very nice man, but, but he was very obsessed with, with this lawsuit. By the time I had dated my, my ex-girlfriend, um, he had been in this lawsuit process for, I think, about six or eight years by then. 
like almost a decade of of pursuing this one particular uh, one particular violation, one particular whatever you want to call it, pursuing this uh, this thing in his life at the expense of everything else, uh, at the expense of finding work, at the expense of doing something meaningful with his life. And he, he was not receiving uh, income. Uh, I think he was on government assistance, but he just couldn't pick himself up. Um, and eventually, uh, you, know, you know, two years into, into dating uh, my ex-girlfriend, and we broke up around the two-year mark, but two, two years into, <laughs> into this relationship, uh, like at the eight to 10 year mark of her father's legal battle, it, the case finally resolved. And he got some small uh, amount of money, uh, nowhere near the amount that he thought he would receive after some, somewhere between eight to 10 years of protracted litigation, right? It was just not worth it. Sometimes it's just better to, to move on with life um, and focus on better things. That, that's the equivalent of what Sang Su would say is besieging a walled city, right? You know, a, a long siege where the defender and the attacker are just stuck in the stagnant stage of attrition. This, this stagnant game of attrition just slowly through, through attrition trying to, to wear the other side down. And, and that's what, what a siege is, right? It comes from the French word, excuse me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but siege, uh, which is to wait, right? It is it's just kind of waiting the, the other side out. Um, and, and that's what happened, unfortunately, to my ex-girlfriend's father. So, so that's a, a very sad case of, of litigation leading to victory, uh, but eventually also uh, to, to a large extent leading to defeat. So that's some of the parallels I can draw between Sang Su's hierarchy of victory uh, and my experience as a lawyer. Uh, again, this is going to be the first episode of multiple episodes on uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War and how it applies to law and, and other aspects of life. I hope you've enjoyed the first video. Stay tuned for the next one. Again, this is Randy I. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're having an amazing day. I will talk to you soon.